Hi, I'm Angie. And I'm Jamie. Did you ever want to know the dirty details of your therapist's life? Join us for Therapeutic Happy Hour as we address the absurdities of life's daily expectations as best friends, mothers, and yes, even therapists. Welcome to The Shrink Show. I think it has to do with similar to how my last client, um, they literally ended session, they're like, okay, well, Thanksgiving's in two days. What do I do? Do I go or do I don't go? I go, well, what, what, what do you want? <laughs> like, they just, they didn't know what decision to make. They were too afraid. They were like, well, I want this decision, but everyone else says this. And this other person said this. So then they come to me as if I'm like the fucking expert of their life. <laughs> And I'm like, mm. and then I, and, and then all I did was repeat it back to them and say, well, what, what do you want? Do that. Really and that was point. the first time she was like, oh yeah. Cause I'm so used to asking everybody else. And cause everyone else is, she goes, usually they're wrong, but I'm so used to asking for their feedback or I trust them or, um, like some, what if I am wrong? Um, so how do you make decisions? How do you make whether it's day-to-day piddly decisions or like big, should I start a new business decision? Right. Like, um, how do you make that? Should I divorce my husband? Um, you know, like, what do I do? Should I like or subscribe to the Shrink Show podcast? You should like and subscribe. There's a right answer to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should I comment and provide <laughs> <laughs> suggestions and feedback? Please, for the love of God. Please do, because it really costs you absolutely nothing except a brief moment of time. And let's be honest, we all have opinions. And let's be honest, Angie and I need every ego stroke you are willing to give us, well, okay? and... I mean, I do. I don't know about Angie, but... I... I just want to hear that I'm doing a good job, you guys. Well, not only that, but I, I want to know how, how to improve, how to be you know, the best self, how to, how to work more so that it is reaching and resonating with everybody. (laughs) Well, not only that, but this makes me think we spent all those silly episodes, not silly, but like all those other episodes talking about like the story of us and who we are and how we met. Okay. So the reason why we made this podcast (laughs) was because we want this to be a dialogue with our audience. And yes, you were listening to it during your own time and perhaps well beyond after we've filmed this, but we want you to be a part of the conversation. So even though you've listened to like six episodes ago, give us a comment about it. Keep the dialogue going. Yeah, for real. Because that's, I mean, we're drinking, we're having happy hour for days. Okay. For days. So you guys join <laughs> our happy hour. Okay. And just keep this conversation flowing. Cause Our drinks are flowing. Because we had talked about it at one point. (laughs) We really wanted to do like a live episode with my mom. And let me tell you, folks, you you want to have a great time. There's not a single person that has met my mother that has not just been giddy with joy. I love her. She's so funny and just so fly by the seat of her pants and isn't pretentious, doesn't really try to be anything that she isn't, which... Is so refreshing, and people love her for her. Because she's authentic, yeah. She is. And that kind of goes into what we wanted to talk about today with... (laughs) We didn't know what we wanted to talk about. Yeah, really, we didn't. And actually, it's kind of ironic, if you think about it, because... (laughs) Guys, what I know what we're going to talk about today. (laughs) What are we talking about? It's anxiety. Is it my intuition, or is it my anxiety? Uh Uh-huh. When it comes to decision-making... I mean, how often are we hesitant in about things and we're like, okay, is this my intuition saying maybe that's not a good idea or maybe I need to rethink it? Or is it my anxiety and my fear of failing or my fear of not rising, you know, to, to the level that I want to or pigeonholing myself or mm-hmm. fuck. What is it? Or like, <laughs> oh, well, I'll let this person down or everybody else thinks this about it so maybe they're right and I'm wrong and I should do what what they all say or even just the pressure you know like before hitting record we were talking briefly about 
my own 501c3 that we're trying, I'm trying to get off and running. And it's like, you it's become, great though. Cause when we listen to this in the future, it'll exist and we'll laugh about it. We like, will. Oh, remember how silly, you remember how silly you were, Angie, worrying about all this stupid bullshit that doesn't matter. But the reality is you become paralyzed with decisions. Yeah. I mean, even your it's client little decisions. that was like, should I go to this Thanksgiving or shouldn't I? It's, it isn't and, even necessarily yeah. what she wants or doesn't want. It's what are the consequences mm -hmm. of this decision yeah. going to be? If my company fails and I get, I put everything into it, then the consequences aren't just on me. They are on my entire family. And, oh, man. like Yeah. No pressure. Don't mess this up. Right. So is it... Is it that fear? It, you know what? You're right. It all bit, it all comes down to fear. Fear of not being enough. Fear of failure. Fear of having your nose rubbed in the shit. <laughs> you know, like the dog that shits on the carpet. Mm hmm But is it failure? <laughs> Episode done. I don't know. I know. That's it. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and for more wisdom, <laughs> tune in next week. Oh, oh my God. God. See, even just knowing the answer to this is paralyzing. Why? Why? Uh, you know, maybe. Is but it what because part is the scariest part for you? Wanting to just get it right because this matters so much to me. I trust my intuition, but I also. I get lost in the details and I then become anxious and then I feel this sense of like panic and urgency and then I become paralyzed. So then you don't trust your intuition because what? Then I, then I do well, nothing. what's stopping you? Because it's like sometimes the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And so you, I don't know, you just want to do it right. But I can tell you, so I went on my annual vacation because I get to go on one vacation a year because I'm a social worker and that's about how much money I have. Um, and what is interesting, so maybe you can help me figure this out. I was thinking about nothing. And even when you asked me how my vacation was, I said, it was so lovely. I didn't have to think. Mm -hmm. I could just be. Yeah. Like, and when I just was, I just kind of allowed myself to go wherever felt right and then I was like let's just start walking so we started walking and I was like "Ooh, this store is colorful let's go in so we did fell in love with this store clerk went back to her house because she needed her garage fixed and thought Joel looked like the sort of guy who could fix her garage that's what I see when I see Joel yeah not many people do so <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> Um, so unfortunately we weren't able to fix the garage, but her house was incredible. I got a free bookmark from her. She, it was an art store Aww. and it was the coolest art that I'd ever seen. Same thing. I went to a flea market thing and there was one store. It was a woo woo store, but I was like drawn into it and I was like, yes, please. Went in there, ended up getting an evil eye bracelet that my friend was buying for me and I had commented on wanting one for my daughter to protect her from all of the energy attacks that she gets and the lady just gave it to me and was like here for you you have that I was like oh my god and then there was another there was a third time where I got something for free and I noticed with each of those it's like me winning contests look at you getting free shit I know but each time it was with me not thinking and just doing yeah because you were supposed to get those things but I'm wondering how often my anxiety prevents me from getting the things that I should get mm -hmm. because I become paralyzed in that overthinking and I don't just do. Yeah. Like your client who didn't know if she should go to Thanksgiving or not. Well, if she goes, maybe that will prevent her from experiencing what she needs to experience if she doesn't go. If intuitively or just on fly by the seat of her pants if she were able to make the decision carefree mm -hmm. without the stress of whatever anyone thinks or does let's say her decision would be to stay home maybe she'd experience something so fucking magical 
Yeah. But if her fear prevents her from doing what she wants because she's afraid of the consequences and she goes, yeah, then maybe she won't experience that. Well, and that's why you said fear. I'm like, what? how are we making these decisions? It's like, get rid of right or wrong, but look at it with, are you looking at it with fear? Or are you looking at it with love? You know, are you looking at this decision with like the fear of, you know, oh, like, oh, I should have brought Jamie's itinerary and like made all these decisions about where we're shopping ahead of time or like, oh, I should have, like, we need to make sure we're back in time for this and we need to make sure we're doing this. You know, the fear of like, oh, we're running out of time, you know, because that's, I think, a fear of like what structured fun gives us is like the fear of losing time or are we just living life with love and saying, you know what? I love this feeling and I'm going to follow this loving feeling and it happens to take me on a walk and like oh my gosh I love taking walks and I love stores that are woo woo and like I'm going to walk in here and so think about if you're making this decision based off of love or based off of fear oh my like God. what are you afraid of okay you've seen Finding Nemo yes Several times. Just okay. a couple. Yeah. I can or probably Finding quote Dory. it. Oh, gosh. I love Finding Dory so I love both of them so much. Okay, so, Dory. I'm a lot like Marlon. I'm a lot like Dory. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just realized this, so that makes me laugh so much. Like his jokes, excessively detailed, takes a long time to get to the point. Have you guys met me? Oh, my God. Well, and Dory just is like, I like shells. Let's follow shells. And shells. <laughs> and then she finds her parents that she lost... But she lost her parents for how fucking long? Yeah, a and lifetime. Then it was like just her thinking, ooh, seashells, and she found what she needed to yeah, find. Because she... as soon as she fell into the trap of thinking like Marlon, like critical, yes. like well, Marlon thinks I'm dumb, and I ruin everything because he said I ruin everything. Yes. And Nemo's upset at me when she started worrying about everybody else except for herself. That's when then she. That's, be- what happens. that's when she lost herself. She lost herself. Yep. Oh my God. Okay. So that's all I need to do because if, when I think about every amazing thing that has ever happened in my life, it was completely on impulse. It was a, well, let's just see what happens. Or like I think about when I was 18, I, we were in, I was in, I, we, I, apparently. Who are you talking I am, to? I am more than, than myself. <laughs> I don't know. Me and me, my, my current self and my past self, me and myself and I, I don't know. I was in Romania. We all, the whole group decided to just kind of go and explore and I climbed a mountain and I just, I climbed the easy side of the mountain and then I decided to go walk because I didn't want to go down yet to walk on, you know, a more difficult side. And then I got fucking trapped and I'm crying. I'm sobbing. I am sobbing on the top of the mountain because I'm like, I don't know where I am. I don't know how to get myself down. Like, this is a terrible, this was a terrible idea. But it was an incredibly healing experience. I needed to feel that feeling. Mm-hmm. And to work through it. Every great thing in my life has not come necessarily easily, but it's come impulsively. Hey, impulsivity, man. Yeah. Intuition, anxiety, or impulsivity. Yeah. Well, and sometimes too, it's like, you know, like uh, all of my decisions, we always say, or I always say, my impulsive decisions that I just kind of like make, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm doing this, um, always end up correct. So like even starting my private practice, I was like, I I made spreadsheets, I made decisions, I, I had in the back of my mind like, okay, this statistically and mathematically financially equates to a good life decision. However, my overthinking mind, I presented my spreadsheet to like everybody that I knew to be like, okay, you guys, so I did a spreadsheet. I'm just going to show it to you, okay? And like, it was mostly my husband who gives two shits about spreadsheets, but he knows to like play the game. So I was like, okay, dear, so look at this column and then look at this row. And so I I did this equation of if I went part-time or if I went full-time or if I just quit and just stop working because it mostly had to do with childcare with like, okay, we're literally pregnant. We literally have to pay for childcare soon. What the fuck do we do? What, what did I do getting pregnant? We didn't think this through. Terrible idea. I know. Actually, no, it was a fantastic idea. See? I mean, yeah, I guess it was good to life decision. So here we are. Right. And so I was like, okay, I have a spreadsheet because we don't know how to afford childcare. 
And we look at the options and I'm like, okay, well, like at that point I was like, okay, well, going part-time makes more sense, um, but I'll stay at where I'm working. Like, okay, we got it because I'd been working, I was working at the hospital. I just got the job at the hospital. So I was like, okay, mathematically this works out. Math is good. So then second child comes along and then we're like, oh uh, shit, like it's, it's going to get, it's more, uh, there's two of them now. Uh, we've got to really do the math. And then I was like, wait a minute, someone, like, I see people doing private practice, more and more people in my circle, so I'm like, oh, I don't know, like, that doesn't make any sense, because in school, they always said, don't do private practice, you're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. Do you remember them saying that? But you make more money. I know, it's bullshit. Why do they lie to straight to my face? So then I... I think maybe at that time... At that time, you... Oops, sorry, Mike. So sorry, listener. I'm aggressive to you today. (laughs) The problem, I think, a lot of times now is financially, we have not progressed the way we have in every other way. Yeah. So now it makes more sense. It's that. Well, yeah. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to... I tried to... So my impulsive decision was I'm going to go private practice. Now, my anxiety thinking was, okay, well, I'm going to figure out when is the right time to go. Because I was like, okay, like, like I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And as soon as I made up my mind, I was like, I'm going to do it. I was going to pick when. It's got to pick when. And I was like, okay, well, we got to time it out. The baby's supposed to be born at this time. And we'll put in our notice is what we'll do. Math. So then I do it. I, I'm like, yes. My anxiety is like, fuck you. I win. Like, because... No, I told my anxiety, fuck you, I win. Because I'm like, no, I made the decision. This is best. I thought everything through. Put in my notice, start my private practice. And then COVID comes. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, my Which, you know what's fucking crazy, though? That actually was, (laughs) was ironically, the the perfect timing. That was the best time. I highly recommend starting a private practice in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, honestly. It was, I mean, it was terrifying because I was like, okay, we have no health insurance. We didn't, remember, remember the, the wee old days of we didn't know, like, about masks. Like, people were wearing, like, like, bags over their head at Walmart and, like, scuba gear because no, nobody knew. Like, we didn't understand it. And it's funny now because it's, you know, we know a little bit more, so I don't know much. <laughs> but, but I just was like, oh, my God, I'm losing health insurance because I was the health insurance carrier. And then I'm like, oh, my God, how am I supposed to build a caseload with this thing called telehealth? But what was magical is I was thinking about it, and when you were talking about in another previous episode about like, oh my God, like COVID, like wrecked everyone's world, blah, blah, blah. For at least my husband works in a trade, so it didn't wreck his world at all. And for me, I was like, it didn't wreck my world at all because I've literally, I still to this day work exactly the same as I did at the very beginning of COVID. I have the option of telehealth. I've always had the option of telehealth. I was not a part of the therapist group who needed to learn the bridge of telehealth, um, who needed to understand like the um, interstate lines of like doing therapy outside of state lines Mm -hmm. um, and where you're licensed and where you're not. And so I was like, well, this, I mean, this is great. I, I only know the world post COVID and I was learning as clients were learning, but it was great because I was also building my practice. So I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing because this EHR is brand new to me, but also you're brand new to me, so it's okay that we both are struggling right now because we're learning together. So it's kind of your comfort with all of that, and are you willing to take that risk and trust the universe, trust that everything is going to be okay? Like yeah. how much, as we're talking, I'm, I'm realizing intuition is Almost, it, it is impulsivity. Yes. Because anxiety comes from that decision making, the overanalyzing, yeah. the I'm paralyzed now with the, the amount of options that I have. Like if you say, do you want Chinese or, or Mexican food? Okay. I can decide between those two. But if you say, okay, look. We have Chinese, we have Mexican, we have Thai, we have American, we have pub, we have Tex-Mex, we have, and then I'm like, 
holy shit, like I like, oh, I like things yeah. that are different. I don't know. Now I'm overwhelmed because that's so many decisions. Yeah. And now I'm overthinking, well, okay, I could really use some Korean ribs, but I also really want some chips and salsa. How do I get all the things? It, yeah. It's too much. Overthinking. Yeah. It's too much. I think anxiety comes, again, it comes from a place, the way I think we're using it is it comes from a place of fear. Like we're overthinking. We're like ruminating. And, and by overthinking, I mean ruminating. We're like replaying like, well, what if I get this? And what if I wanted this? What if I get this? What if I get this? What if I do this? What if that's wrong? What if so-and-so judges me because they wanted that? What if this? So the intuition is more just saying, Intuition. What's funny is intuition and anxiety are the same fucking thing. Intuition is just looking at it as, you know what? I'm going to just do it. And I'm going to do it with open arms and love. And if I fall on my face and so-and-so is like, dude, you got wings for the third time this week? That's pretty fat. Then I would be like, yeah, well, that's how you see it, girlfriend. Like, this is just mm -hmm. what I'm doing. So intuition and anxiety are the same exact thing. It's think, just how you look at it. Do you think a lot of the times we are afraid of trusting our intuition and fall into that anxiety trap because of others' reactions to the consequences? And I, I think it's because we, we value others' reactions more than ours. Right. Because instead of looking at their reaction is what it is, again... Taking that emotion out of it, mm -hmm. seeing it as is, not attached to whatever. Let's say you refuse to make the decision on the food. And I say, mm, you know what? I really like this joint. Let's go here. Yeah. And then you're unhappy with the food. How often do we then become attached to oh, shit? See, I chose the wrong place. I, yep. I should have chosen a better place and, and then, didn't like it. And then we punish, quote unquote, listener can see my fingers saying, mm -hmm. quote unquote, we punish ourselves by replaying, oh, I made the wrong decision. Oh my God. Right. I so, shouldn't have opened my private practice. Oh my God. So not only that, then I go so far as to now I can't trust my own intuition. Yeah. Because my intuition was wrong. But it's not even intuition. It's because... But my intuition was to go to that restaurant and you hated it and you, or my intuition was whatever right. decision, my intuition was to open this business and this business failed. failed. Yeah. So now, but then it's looking I'm at a it, failure. I, and I tell my clients, look at every decision and take away like pass, fail, take away right, wrong and look at it from what are we gaining from this experience? This is simply an experience. You can put the, the lens over it that says failure. Like, I could have still put the lens of failure on my private practice because, like, I'm, like, there are still things I don't love about it. So I could, I could focus, I could hyper focus on those things. Mm -hmm. I could hyper focus on the hours that I'm working. I could hyper focus on, like, the clients that I wish I could have and say, gosh, I'm still not doing it. I'm still not winning. I'm still not good enough. I, I should have just gone with the guaranteed health insurance like because I, I don't have all those things still or I could hyper focus on oh my gosh you guys like I, I I am working less I have different days yeah my health insurance is pretty shit but I can live with that you know but or I I am just I'm giving myself grace and saying yeah this is hard but this he, is hard having not yeah. good health insurance or this is hard not having like all of these other like fallback things like paid sick time. That That is hard. One, how much to, how self-centered are we, right? Again, I go back to that example of I choose the restaurant, you hate it. And then I am like, Great. She, Jamie hated. Jamie hated the restaurant. I am such a fucking idiot. I shouldn't have chosen it. Yeah, but what if, true. what if, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <bitch. laughs> um, no, but what if the universe is trying to teach you to not always give your power away? Yeah. What if your lesson in all of this is to speak up? What yeah. if this was a powerful teaching moment for you? 
Mm-hmm. And so I didn't actually fail. I did exactly what needed to happen so that you could advance your soul. Yeah. But if I don't know that, then I may feel like a failure. Yeah. And so sometimes I just wonder how much we just need to calm our motherfucking tits. Yeah. And just recognize that it is what it is. And if you're unhappy, okay, well, my bad. Yeah. Like next and, time, let me know what you want. And that's why I think a lot of clients come to me with that. They're like, well, the the way we're sales pitching it, like in this episode especially, is like, well, at what point is it narcissistic? Am I so like, well, fuck you. I don't care that I hurt your feelings and we chose a different restaurant. Like my feelings are more important. And that's where I just say, that's between that other person and their therapist to figure out, Mm -hmm. you know, and was your intention to cause harm? (laughs) Like, were you going out of your way to just choose a restaurant that you knew the other person has only allergies to or food intolerances to? Why would you do that? Of course, that was maybe the wrong decision in that scenario. But in this scenario, it's, well, you didn't say anything, you know? My daughter had that too. She, (laughs) minor compared to this, but major in her five-year-old life. (laughs) Because she was upset. It wrecked her day. We went, we had to go to the doctor because this is the lowest my voice has ever been. It's kind of, you sound like me. Can you tell? Oh my God. Should I? Does my voice sound low? Does it sound, I think it It sounds squeaky. Yeah. You guys like that. So anyways, we By the way, her voice is uh, low because my daughter gave her entire family RSV. Yeah, thanks a lot, Angie. <sighs> Hashtag thanks, Iris. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so I'm recovering from my lovely low voice. This and guess little... what? We're still friends because <laughs> my intuition said send Iris to Jamie's. <laughs> uh, Actually, so... my intuition said go on this motherfucking vacation because you need it. And honestly, I was like, you know what? My kids have never been sick ever, so here we go. Hard reality of life. <laughs> Anywho, um, so my voice is hoarse, and we're all sick, right? And we're all at the doctor's office. And so my daughter and son, it was their visit, and we're leaving. And the doctor's like, okay, we're just going to get your discharge paperwork and some stickers. And they look at Mira, and they're like, do you like princesses? And Mira, in her true form, just gives a sturdy glare and and then Maddox is like, yeah, bitch. And I know. I kind of wish she had said and that. And then Maddox says what he wants, and then the doctor leaves the room, and then I go, Mira, you you could have said something right there. You know, it's it's nice when people ask you questions to answer. And I go, you're safe. Mommy's right here. Like I've already done all the pre-talking of like, you're safe. Mommy's with you. I will never leave your side. These are safe people. Talk to these fucking grown-ups. <laughs> Tell them your goddamn symptoms. <laughs> Said it just like that. So, anyways, <laughs> the doctor comes back in, hands her princess stickers. Doctor, I don't fucking want these. Doctor leaves and Mira goes. I didn't want princesses. I wanted Minnie Mouse. And I'm like, I oh, did so... you hear my low voice right there? That was really nice. I love that she's so determined. She knew exactly what she wanted. Why didn't she ask for it? That's what I fucking, but like, ah, uh, so many levels to it because I, uh, I just was like, Mira, <laughs> I was like, the doctor asked and you said nothing. So they only assumed because you said nothing. And so I'm, in my mind, I'm like, this is a teaching moment, Mira, for you to speak up. <laughs> When the doctor fucking asks you a fucking question. And then you want to know what she did? She goes home and she tells her dad, like, doctor, give me princess stickers. I don't want these. And she what throws them dick. on the ground. Like, what a dick. What a fucking dick. Who gives a girl princess stickers? And I go, Bullshit. so she's so upset. But, so fucking sexist. But that's one of those lessons where I'm like, girl, you got to learn to speak up, girlfriend. Like, not everyone is a fucking enemy right now. Right, so did the doctor <laughs> fail? Yeah. Or was this an incredible life lesson for Mira to learn? Either you have to continue to sit in your anger yeah. and be without Minnie Mouse stickers, or you need to speak up and say next time. So that like next time she might say, no, Minnie Mouse. Yeah. Because, you know, she's not going to say it. Nice. She's not going to say, please. Fuck no. 
She's not going to say it with a nice, <laughs> high-pitched voice like her mother. She that, hasn't learned that yet. That, 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 that was her younger brother who was just like, cars, please, with his little dimples. <laughs> And they're like, and the whole time with his visit, they're like, "Oh, he's so sweet." And then Mira, she's like, "Well, she seems sick." I'm like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things wrong with her right now. She's upset. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's such a. She's such. She's incredible. But she's also learning. Like she's 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 dominating, but she doesn't know how to use her voice either. That's the other side. And so she's very powerful. She but is. she doesn't understand her power. But she doesn't understand. She just assumes like, well, why don't you just know? Everything we say, it always goes back to that, what is your intention? Yeah. Which is really ironic. Because intention and I... anxiety is the same. Or or not only that, but, you know, well, I think when we say Did like... you say intention and anxiety is the same? I meant intuition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just but, want to clarify. But when we talk about like the intuition too, I also wanted to throw in there, it's not, it's... You know, if people want to phrase it however they want, if they want to phrase it like if it's your belief in God, if it's your belief in whoever you pray to, yeah. if it's your belief in your spirit, in yourself, in higher power, like fill in the blank, whatever the fuck you want to put in it. But it's the idea of like, is it so and so? Is it God leading me to this? Is it my higher power? Is it my soul? Is it my life's purpose? You could add to it whatever you want. Yes. But... I just want people to know that that's no, an and option. That's a, that's a good caveat because we, we very much respect all religious beliefs. Um, that, I think that's a lot of times why I say spirit and universe interchangeably because to me, those are, the, those are enough to encompass kind of like an overarching umbrella to encompass all of the beliefs because every, every belief is, has its beauty. Has that, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's trusting in what is right for you. And what feels right for you. And I think sometimes, especially as a mom, I don't always get to choose what is right for me. Because I have to... I'm, I'm responsible for four little lives. And a family. And my decisions come with much larger consequences that impact their well-being... And so going on vacation by myself and, you know, being able to just, whoop, you know, go into a store and trust that whatever happens will happen and I don't have to worry about, shoot, where's the two-year-old and where, where's the six-year-old, where's the eight-year-old, I forgot the ages of my kids for a second there, but. <laughs> I kind of blacked out a I little. I did, I did, <clears throat> but. Yeah, I think sometimes that's where the anxiety comes in is we 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 see the bigger picture and we see the larger consequences and we see what society has or doesn't have for us as far as helping bail us out. Right? It's a lot easier to take a risk to start my own business if I come from money and I have a dad who's given me $100,000 and says, "Here, do it. Yeah. And if I fail, I know I can yeah, fall back on it. Yeah, it's not as scary. Him. Yeah. It, you're right. And so it, I think sometimes, but coming up from nothing and saying, okay, I'm going to take this huge risk, possibly lose my house, possibly lose everything, possibly lose my marriage. It's easier to see that as a failure and think, fuck, I made the wrong decision. Yeah. Yeah. But did you? I think like, that's kind of my question is just trusting this? that. And this is my message to myself right now. Trusting that whatever decision I make is the right decision. So attack it with love. Be like, all right, I'm doing this with love. Even if it doesn't pan out in the way that I saw it. Yeah. I had a dream the other day. By dream, it was a journey. I was like, do I get to interpret it? I know. I knew that. But people understand dreams easier. So... It was talking to a future version of myself and um, she was giving me a gift and she grabbed an oyster and I said, I knew you were going to give me a pearl. (laughs) And she said, well, she chuckled, first of all, looked at me with that motherly like, (laughs) you're so naive, you know, that that kind of, and it was a ruby and she, I was confused and she Gave me the ruby, and she said, when you are 
willing to let go of what you expect to find and accept the gift that you are given is when you basically will see or receive exactly what it is that you need. Like that's, that's when the path will unfold. Mm -hmm. Cause if I had become rigid on a pearl out of the oyster, oh, I would have, yeah. I would have been angry. Like what the fuck are you giving me a ruby for? Yeah. And yet I was never meant oh to receive gosh. a ruby. I was yeah. meant to, or uh, an oyster. An I was oyster. meant to receive yeah. the ruby. Yeah. I told my husband this dream and he gifted me one of the coolest things that he, I mean, he's, he's a great gift giver, but do you see this ruby necklace? Yeah, I see it. It's pretty. That was from Joel. Oh my god! For my birthday. Good I, job, Joel. Yeah, I know. And I haven't taken it off since because I saw in the dream, like the ruby somehow became like a necklace. And so I told him this whole experience. Aww, and so then he gifted so me. Sweet. The ruby necklace, and it meant the world to me. That makes so much sense. I, <laughs> why do we always go back to? So earlier, another client today, I was like, "Are you, are you going?" They were heading to um, a discussion with somebody, and I, and they're like, "Well, I, I need to tell them this because then they're gonna know to say this back." And I go, mm. I go. I go, first of all, are you going to just say what you want to say and you're hoping that they'll say it back? Mm -hmm. Or like, are you just going to say what you want to say and that will make you happy enough? And they're like, well, I'm expecting this, but I'm hoping that I'll get this. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so that I'm just, like, you're not listening. Like, mm -hmm. you, you should typically go to something saying, I'm just going to go as far as I can go. With no, with kind of ignorant bliss to how you may respond. Right. I, I can guess these are two options that you might respond with. I can mentally prepare for those two options. But that that's as far as I go. But they're, they were betting and waging on the There's one that made response. them feel better. And I was like, mm -hmm, that's, that's. And so that was like the focus of session was I was like, okay, you're going to be let down if you're walking into this expecting yes. a fucking pearl. Like, you're going to be so upset. You're going to be very upset. You're going to be very upset. It's going to look like a failure. Like, like my you're private... You're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, like my private practice in the very beginning, if I focused on just the pearl ending, I would have been very disappointed. But I just was like, I did it. Because it didn't... I'm here and I'm watching. Because if you think about the value of a pearl and a ruby, mm -hmm. it's similar. Yeah. But it is not the same. But it's how you decide to see it. Yes. If you wanted that pearl, then of course you're going to be disappointed in a ruby. But if you were like, I'm hoping for some sort of gemstone. Right. I'm just hoping. I'll just see. And then you get something, you're like, holy shit. Or even just recognizing like, I, I see a pearl in my, in my mind. And then if it's Well, because maybe you like rubies more. So to you, it is a pearl because it is more valuable. And then I get a gift and it's like, oh my God, that is still an incredible gift. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Or even I was talking to somebody this week about learning how to create those boundaries. Sometimes in that scenario, I've had arguments with um, colleagues, right? And so then, or they've done something that has been very rude or I've perceived it rude and it's upset me, whatever. And then I go to them to explain my side and to say, hey, <clears throat> I, I don't know if I upset you. I don't know what happened. Let's talk about it. Would I, in an ideal world, like for them to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, that was my bad. I yeah. was having a bitchy day, whatever. Of course. Yeah. Is there the possibility that they're like, yeah, I fucking meant every word I fucking said, you fucking bitch. Uh-huh. Yep. Either way, similar to your example, me going to them to express it, I what I am expecting in return is knowledge on how our relationship will proceed. What boundary do I need to put up? Yeah. Because if you said that with the intention of hurting my feelings or mm -hmm. with the intention of I'm right and you're wrong and you are unwilling to hear my side, now I know exactly who I'm dealing with. Yeah. I know how to create that boundary. 
Yeah. If you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was just off that day. Okay. Yeah. Now I know what kind of limit our relationship has or doesn't need to have. Right. And that's a gift in and of itself. It, the gift is yeah, in how you look at the it. knowledge. And well, so then going back to what started this entire fucking discussion in the first place is you trying to make your big life decisions about literally every minor detail. And by minor, not like little and minute, but like the little tiny, like the foundation of yeah, a 501c3. The small details that you have to have of your 501c3. It's looking at it as in, let's say. Let's say two years from now, like it still doesn't exist. Nothing. It's looking at it as, were you expecting the pearl or were you expecting an experience? What experience Mm -hmm. did you gain from it? Mm -hmm. Because the other side of it is you, you've been in the field of social work for how fucking long. So you know how to play the game and be a good goddamn social worker. So hypothetically, if you go this 501c3 route, and hypothetically, if it doesn't pan out the way you want it to, you know, the board decides to go this other way, or it turns into something different, or finances don't work out right, you can always go back to what you are at. You've done this this far. Oh my God. So yeah. you can, you know how to play the game this way. You're just upping your game. It doesn't mean you failed. It just means, okay, well, I've, I'm going to go back to social work. You know, I tried 501c3. Doesn't mean you can't go back and try it again, though. Because this time around, you're like, I fucking know how to play the game. Last time, this didn't play out well. Well, I didn't know this information. I didn't know this legality issue. Uh-huh. I know it now. You're just playing the game. So, also, look at every significant other you've ever had when you were like 14, 15, 16, 17. I never had one at 14, but okay. No, I mean, like, it's like <laughs> I know. your boyfriend, when you're a child, whatever. I know. But, like... The person that you had a crush on, and you're like, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with them. I'm so in love. Let's celebrate our one-hour anniversary. Right? Like that person. Uh, you know, You know. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and looking back, thinking, thank fucking God. I know. That I did not marry that person. Or right. my life wasn't spent forever with them. Because that is not how it was supposed to pan out. Yeah. But in the moment, how much did we see that as a yeah. failure or as I'm not enough yeah. or as, oh my God, I just like, did the yeah, wrong person. Yeah, that person didn't love me enough or do this. But now you're like, oh my God, now I know the difference because I have that. And it wasn't, but you yeah. needed all of those stepping stones to get to where you are. Yeah. Just like if you have a thousand failed businesses, you learned how not to business. I know. Right? Try a different job. Like the light bulb. What is the light bulb example? It's always, um, you know, they asked, uh, is it Thomas Edison who did the light bulb? They asked Thomas Edison, what was it like to fail a thousand times, you know, before figuring out the light bulb? And he said, I didn't fail. I learned a thousand ways not to make a light bulb. Oh, yeah. And that, that's a powerful thing of... Trusting your intuition and not giving up. If you know intuitively you are meant for something, you will get there. It just may not look the way that yeah. you think. It may not, not... It might not be a straight shot. I was just going to say that. Our paths are not get out of straight. my head. Because oh, we're intuitively in sync right now. Because we're, we're talking intuitively. I know. I was thinking about... <laughs> When you said the light bulb thing, I was thinking of the social work one where they're like, how many social workers does it take to change a light bulb? One. <laughs> Six... Well, does the light bulb want to change? Yeah. One, but that's only if the light bulb wants wants to to change. change. Yeah. (laughs) Or that's even the social worker's way of like, you know, like you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, and you teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime. Or it's, did anyone ask if the man likes fish? Yeah, what if the man's allergic to fish? I know, that would be awkward. Oh my God, but see then, then you become so inundated with all those details that it's like, fuck, just... If you are if you are meant to teach people how to fish, it's not your responsibility to figure out yeah. if they're allergic. Yeah. You'll teach the right ones, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's meant for you will never be denied. So how do we sum this up? Intuition and anxiety are essentially the same. Are you looking at it from love or fear? Yeah. And trust. Trusting yourself that even if it doesn't pan out in the way that you thought, even if your oyster produces a ruby versus a pearl 
That doesn't mean that you have failed. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. Sometimes those mistakes are exactly what needs to happen in order for us to move forward. And sometimes we are the catalyst to make others uncomfortable so that they can move forward. And what a beautiful gift, truly. What a great gift that we have in this whole life path together. Because if I choose the wrong restaurant for you and you're upset, that teaches you to use your voice, just like Mira. Yeah, speak up for your doctor, sticker, girlfriend. Right? If you don't Say want your the, sticker. If you don't want the pre- princess stickers, speak up. But what a gift that that doctor gave her mm-hmm. in not allowing her to, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just a gift. The doctor was busy. I saw both sides. I'm like, the doctor was busy. She just wanted to give the girl a goddamn sticker. Yeah. Mira was stubborn and doesn't like to talk to other humans. She's going to need to learn how to interact with other humans who ask her a basic question. Right. They're giving her a gift. They're not hurting you. If she doesn't want a princess sticker. Yeah. So it's it's, it's kind of like basic. the doctor wasn't wrong in their intuition. Yeah. Neither one of them were wrong or right. I think it was learning for both of them. The doctor learning how to interact with somebody who hates talking. Yeah. <laughs> and Mira who needs to learn how to talk. So really, getting back to who you are, what okay. it is you want, what it is you desire, and just taking one step at a time and trusting that nothing is right, nothing is wrong, it just is. Separating your emotions, that's point number three. Separating your emotions or your emotional attachment to the outcome. To the pearl. Right. Yeah. Okay, hey, let's do my mug. Uh, let's do mug. It says, <laughs> <laughs> donut. Trooper to protect the donuts. So this works because every impulsive decision I make has to do with donuts. Every time my kids want donuts, we go and get them. Donuts. And there, there might be times where I also say, children, do you want some donuts? God, I love donuts. Oddly, they always say yes. Also, speaking of donuts, um, there's always a, there's a free donut day once a year. It's usually the first Saturday in June. And so you can, Krispy Kreme usually gives away free donut. And locally, like a bunch of local donut shops give away free donuts. Sometimes they just have sales, so it's not free, but there's sales. And I round up all the nieces and nephews in my van. <laughs> and we go to like six donut stores. <laughs> and I'm like, kids, get in the car. We're getting donuts today. And we get like And like we you just eat donuts. No all fucking day. joke. We'll go we'll start at Krispy Kreme because it's free and, and we'll I'll just buy a beverage. And then I'm like, hold on to that beverage, girlfriends. Like, we're gonna eat these the rest of the day. And then we go to Krispy Kreme <laughs> and then we'll go to what's Winchell's? the Winchell's? No. Sorry, Hertz. Winchell's. Uh, Hertz Donuts. Yep. We'll always go to Hertz Donuts and I'll always get extra because that seems like a good life decision. I'm like, well, we need extra to take home. Obviously. So I'll buy a dozen, even though there's not a dozen of us. And so I'm like, let's just put them in a box. And then we'll go to Dapper Donuts where like there are these fancy little donut holes on like 168, thank you, where they, they bake them fresh so they're warm and then they'll give toppings and like the kids pick which toppings and I'll give them each a little box to take home. And then anywhere else that has free... And they're well, all discounted? Yeah, discounted or free. And so I'll what? take my nieces and nephews and they're always like, when's free donut day? When's Aunt Jamie taking us a free donut day? And I'm like, you guys, it's free donut day. It's I, a really big day. But that was like an impulsive thing I did one year and it's say, like become that. a tradition. And like it's been a tradition a for great, years. What a great example of how... An impulsive decision can become something that is so meaningful yeah. for so many. Because and like my again, my ne- kids are my, gonna the oldest remember. one is like fifteen, and he's still like Aunt Jamie in his low voice. He's like Aunt Jamie, we're gonna do free donut day, and I'm like, you want to still hang out with me? Oh my god! No, he wants free donuts. Also, I know why are my children not included in free donut day? Because you're not a niece or nephew, and you guys gave me fucking RSV. Asshole. Only, okay, I'll invite everyone except for Iris. <laughs> except, <laughs> except my, except Mira Maddox like ask about her every day. They're like, when can she spend the um, night again? She's kind of one of the best humans. Like, when she's can she funny. spend the night? So let's talk about my mug. My mug. I chose it a because it was giant. Because impulsive, impulsively. Wow, sound it out. 
Words impulsively. Are hard. Today has just been kind of That's tough. fantastic. It is fantastic. I'll and drink to that. Fascinating. Um, no, impulsively and intuitively, I knew I needed a large happy hour drink. <laughs> Who doesn't? Today's been rough. <laughs> Already, and I have the day off. I know. I was like, didn't you not work today? What the fuck is wrong with you? I know, but I'm like trying to get my Your house ready nearly for as low as mine. people to come over, and I had the kids, and I, I don't know. There was just... Yeah. Quit looking for your pearl, girlfriend. Just looking, go through it. Go for it with your heart. Go for my ruby. See? Red. My cup is red. And it says, <laughs> keep it spicy. So... What I have discovered about myself and my life is when I don't overthink things and I just jump right in, it, it seems so ridiculous and people are like, whoa, but they have learned that the spiciness is Angie. And in fact, people have come to love me for that, even though they still judge me for it. Like, for example, my husband, because he has more on the line now. But it was one of the traits that he fell in love with me for, was that spontaneity, that impulsivity, that trusting my intuition in that moment and being like, fuck it, let's just go ahead and, you know, let, let's go to this over this place over here and hope that we don't die, cool, you know, like, <laughs> all right, let's jump off the cliff and into the giant cenote and see what happens, <laughs> like, let's spend $350 in Mexico at this little kiosk thing off the resort and hope that they don't steal our money and we actually get to go on the excursions. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and he, in that example, he was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I don't know. He's like a nice guy. Let's see what happens. Sorry. Is it... And it worked out. Later. YOLO. It worked out perfect. YOLO. Yay. Yeah. Anyway, trust yourself. We and... love you. Trust that everything is as it should be. And don't forget to like, rate, subscribe. Right. Cost nothing for you. Do everything that impulsively. Us. Help us make our billion. Yay. Bye. Bye. If you think we're cool. Or even if you don't. Please like or subscribe so you'll stay up to date on all things The Shrink Show. Feel free to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Shrink Show. You can also visit our website at theshrinkshowpodcast.com to check out some of our merch, submit your episode topic requests, tell us a funny story, or even donate money or gin to the cause. Thank you for choosing to spend a portion of your life with us. And remember, don't take yourself too seriously. Life is all a giant shrink show. A Huda Media Production. Side effects of listening to this podcast may include side aches or snorting from laughter, impromptu jazz hands, nodding in agreement even though you might be listening alone, and occasional, you said it girl, and mild cases of existential dread. This podcast is strictly for entertainment and informative purposes only, and is not intended or implied to diagnose, treat, or otherwise substitute for professional mental health, medical, legal, or other advice. Thank you.